Thank you, Dr. Schimmer. Uh -oh. Hold still, don't want to mess up the mic. Um, make sure I've got my little pointer going here. All right, so the disease we're talking about is acute myeloid leukemia, AML, and in particular, a very nasty subset of the disease uh, occupying about a quarter, a third of patients who have a mutation. The patients don't have a mutation. The leukemia has a mutation in this enzyme called FLT3. Now, we all have FLT3 in our body. It's only supposed to be on in tiny amounts in very few cells within the bone marrow to tell the cells to regenerate. Leukemia seems to think this is a neat trick to mutate the enzyme, turn it on, it provides the leukemia with growth signals, makes it very resistant to chemotherapy. So we can get these patients into remission, but they will relapse very quickly, and once they do, uh, things get pretty dreadful from there. We've been trying to inhibit this enzyme for the last 10 years. Um, and here are some of the candidates that we've been using over the last decade. These older compounds, Lestortinib and Mitostorin, that have been presented at, at ASH in previous years. These funny little plots below here represent all the uh, similar enzymes called kinases in the human body. And this drug, Lestortinib, for example, the little red dot means it inhibits each one of these little kinases. One of them happens to be FLT3. So when you're trying to inhibit FLT3 with something that inhibits all the other kinases, you get a lot of side effects. So the older drugs, we really weren't very successful in inhibiting FLT3 because of all the side effects. Quizartinib, the drug I'm talking about, is really the first drug that was designed as a FLT3 inhibitor. Is extremely selective, shown here. It really tends to just hit FLT3 plus a few others. 10 to 50 times more potent in humans than any, any of the other FLT3 inhibitors. So that's why we think it's working so well. The, the trial I'm going to tell you about is this uh, AC220002, a phase two study, um, two different cohorts. Uh, cohort one was mostly an older patient, and Dr. Cortez is actually going to be presenting the results of that later this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to pre be presenting the results of cohort two tomorrow. Cohort two was a particularly rough group of patients. They were younger. They had uh, been given one round of treatment and either gone into remission or were resistant to that. And they were given a second round of therapy and that had also failed. These patients were essentially the equivalent of on death row. We don't have a cure rate even to report for this group. And the survival is measured in weeks. So it's a, a terribly grim population that we're trying to fix here. This was the response of those patients to just single agent treatment with quizartinib. Uh, while the, what we call the composite complete remission rate, now this is really clearing the leukemia down to uh, under 5% in the bone marrow, you know, mostly clearing the marrow out of leukemia. It was in 46% of the patients, but literally three quarters of them had some reasonably dramatic response where all the leukemia is cleared from the blood and mostly cleared from the marrow. And even in, uh, there were two, two groups within this cohort, uh, a group that clearly contained the mutation, another group where the test was sent off to see if they could detect the FLT3 mutation, it was negative, but in fact, we know a substantial portion of these patients actually had it at a low level. And there is even a response rate in that group as well. Uh, what was also interesting is that Many of these patients, 79% of them in that FLT3 positive cohort, were, had been completely resistant to their most recent round of intensive chemotherapy, and yet they responded beautifully to just this simple oral drug. Now, I told you it was a pretty grim group in terms of survival, uh, and so this looks kind of scary. There was still uh, um, uh, many patients who did not survive this. But what we found is these were young patients. When we cleared the leukemia out of their marrow, they could go to a bone marrow transplant. And there we have a real survival curve. So the patients shown in, in the blue line here were patients who actually, once they'd responded to quizartinib, were taken to a bone marrow transplant, which is a potentially curative uh, procedure. And in fact, it has led to long-term survival for a number of these patients. And when you look at the group that was actually had that uh, undetectable mutation, but we think a low level of the mutation, the survival is actually looking extremely encouraging. So uh, our focus for this drug is to get clear the leukemia out of the patient's bone marrow to a sufficient degree to allow them to go to a bone marrow transplant.
So in conclusion, this drug has a very high response rate in a very tough uh, patient population. It's extremely well tolerated. The major toxicity, if you want to call it that, was this thing called QT prolongation. That's an EKG abnormality caused by many drugs in this class. Cipro, if, for those of you who've been on Cipro, can cause the same thing. Uh, some myelosuppression, uh, the responses are clinically meaningful. Twelve patients actually had beautiful disease control for a prolonged period of time. More than a third of patients were taken to a potentially curative transplant with several long-term survivors. We're studying this. Uh, we're um, refining the dose that we want to use because it's so potent, and we're planning a randomized phase three study. Thank you.